Hey guys, we are here with the stunning Raya, who is going to be performing Crazy yes. at Eurovision You Decide next week. Hello. Raya, first of all, how are you finding this crazy experience of You Decide? It's mental! I'm loving it though, I'm loving every second of it. I'm, I'm struggling with like keeping in touch with my friends, you know, it's all just going mad. And people are like, do you ever talk about anything else at the minute? It's just like, it's a full-time job, full-time job, but I'm loving it. It's, a, it's a, kind of a crazy experience, actually, Eurovision, and you're yeah. maybe picking up a bit of that yeah. tonight. Obviously, the, the songs were released, um, I think, a week, two weeks ago. About a week, yeah, just over a week, yeah. It's been a really huge reaction yeah, yeah. to your song. Yeah. I mean, how has that made you feel? Do you think that's piling on the pressure? or? Um, not so much pressure. I've, I've actually just felt really relieved that people have really loved it. Not that I didn't believe in the song at all, but like, you just never know what kind of feedback you're going to get, especially when you're just putting stuff out there. It's like that with anything. And it's something you really believe in, and you just never know what people are going to say. And everyone's just been so nice and so supportive and genuinely loved the song. So it's made me even more excited. I'm like, oh my God, I get to perform this on stage for everyone. I'm just, you know, couldn't ask for anything better. And in terms of, obviously, it's such a big, energetic you know, dance, massive. dance or, Yeah, 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 massive. You know, in terms of performing it on, on stage, did you have lots of ideas? Have you had a, a lot of input into how you are going to perform it? Yeah, they've let us all have loads of input, sorry. Um, which, obviously, they do each year. So that's really the really good thing about this competition. They let the artists and the writers all have input into, like, creative input. Because it's their product and you're going on stage at the end of the day. Um, I had loads of ideas. Some things that are in the budget for uh, for the first round but if I get through to Eurovision I mean I've got a lot of ideas um, so yeah it's been it's been really good creatively like the song's got a lot to run with so I mean I've, I've had so many things I've wanted to do with it you can only do so much but well, we think the BBC are going to go all out this year as yeah. well so if you do win we think you'll find that budget I think so yeah I now think you're, so. you're for people that might not know about you you're, yeah. you're very experienced I think you've done a lot kind of worldwide actually you, you've yeah. travelled a lot yeah um, tell us more about you kind of before this you know before this week before yeah songs basically I've been working full time as a as a as a lead vocalist for around I'd, I'd say four or five years full time um, I've been performing basically fronting lots of different bands and we travel the world so I've gone all the way over to Hong Kong I've got done Malaysia I've done um, Russia I've done all around Europe I've done a lot wow. of traveling a lot of traveling and it's been amazing so far like it's such a good way to travel you get to do music and you know so basically full-time I've been music I've been in between my gigs I've been writing I've been auditioning and I've been DJing you know I've just basically being a gigging musician for many many years so I've got a lot of experience on stage and stuff like that and kind of what was your reaction when you found out that actually you were going to be one of the six I was driving oh, no. and I was like ah! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't really do much I was like oh my god and I was on loudspeaker but yeah I was just like couldn't believe it couldn't believe no it. insurance companies involved here is there no no, I stayed. I stayed on in my lane, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was drive safe, people. Yeah, drive, drive safe, safe, drive safe. <laughs> but yeah, I was just. I mean, ecstatic. Couldn't believe it. I was just. I don't think I believed it for a while. I was like, okay, cool. And then when things started picking up, I was like, this is happening. Like I'm actually doing this. I'm in the running to represent the UK at Eurovision. And you win on. You win next week. How, how are you going to celebrate? Well, I mean, there's going to be lots of Eurovision parties. I'm going to do those. I, I don't, I don't really go out and drink that much. I can't drink that much when you're a, when you're a singer. Course, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to go up north and see everyone in Doncaster. It's huge, but back home, you know. So I'm just, I don't know. Celebrate with my friends. Celebrate with my family. Well, if you know, if you do end up going to Eurovision, it's always a, a big party vibe, and there will be there will be in Lisbon. Yeah. You, you know. Do you like to party? Obviously, being a DJ, you yeah. must kind of always have that party vibe. Or are you a bit of a home girl sometimes as well? I would say I'm a home girl more so. I okay. think probably like when I was younger, I used to go out and I, you know, I used to when I was at college, I used to go to freshers and I used to do all the partying kind of then. But then since then, when I've been working full time, you absolutely can't afford to do that when you're singing. It's impossible. Like, so I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a party girl. I'm really like 
like sitting at home in front of the TV. I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> with the takeaway, I mean Uber Eats, I'm keeping them afl afloat in my area, I think. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a bit more of a home girl nowadays. And, and, and you know, we spoke a bit about the, the reaction. I mean, how, how has that kind of made you made you feel, really? I've, I've been like ecstatic. Like I haven't been able to sleep. I've been like annoying everyone online. I've been tweeting everything. Every time someone says something nice, I'm like, ah! Um, it's just been amazing. Like I wasn't expecting people to be this supportive um, straight off the bat, you know, without even seeing a performance or whatever. So it's been really, really good and and really, I mean, it's, it's pushed me even further to make sure that this performance is right on the money for everyone, you know. People are ready to see stuff, so, like, yeah. Well, they, they, there's huge, you know, huge support. Obviously, a really good songwriting team. Yeah, behind yeah, yeah. The song. I mean, how, how, did, how did that happen? Was it kind of from the, from the camp they were holding? Yeah, I think they do big camps, and lots of different people go down. Greta obviously went down. Um, they have, like, tons and tons of songwriters that churn out songs and then only a, a select few get picked so it's really like a really good bunch of songs obviously which gives you the, this is why it's so strong like in the in the final um, because it's come from like maybe 60 to 100 songs written at a camp and then the, the best are all selected so yeah. and obviously you, you mentioned Greta yeah. As yeah, well. yeah how does it feel actually having someone that's performed at Eurovision you know quite well known yeah. in, you know in Iceland and the Eurovision world yeah do you think that gives you kind of an extra boost? Or? I think so. I mean, people love Greta, obviously. She's an icon. Uh, and when I met her, she was so supportive, gave me loads of tips, told me about the process, um, what to expect. And she also there is like a bit of a Eurovision big sister, I was saying. Like, every time I've got anything, I'm, any queries, she's there. And she's like, bring me, I don't care what time it is, bring me and I can help. And that's so nice of her. Um, so it's, it's really good having her there. She just feels like a little bit of a... Um, yeah, like like a big sister, you know. I know that I can go to her and be like, "Oh, this is, I'm not sure about this," or you know, she's there. She's got all the experience I could I could need. So well, it's, it's great to have that support. And last yeah. thing we want to know, actually, it's kind of about Eurovision. What is your earliest Eurovision memory? Oh, I was saying this earlier. Well, my my most significant was probably um, Rise of the Phoenix, which I've said wow, to everyone okay. because that kind of made my jaw drop. Um, I would say like it's one of the most iconic performances and that's why it's kind of like my earliest memory that I really I really remember every part of that performance yeah. Um, so yeah I would say I'll say that one you're not going to be having a stick on beard are I'm you not. no alright I'm absolutely well I don't know maybe we think if, we, I, if leave I leave it, it. leave it <laughs> I'll leave it to grow anyway Ray it's been such a pleasure to talk to you and lots you. of support for you out there yeah. good luck next week thank you uh, we think you, you'll be fab can't wait to see thank you thank you and good luck cheers thank you see you next week